Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Inezalea, and today it's another Filmmaking Friday. In today's Filmmaking Friday, I will be showing you how to recreate an effect from a movie called In Time. In my opinion, that's a really great movie. We're going to see how to create an effect uh, that kind of shows their lifespan on their arm, any kind of watch hologram effect. We're going to be doing this effect entirely in Adobe After Effects. I will also provide you the footage so you can follow along with the exact same footage as me. Uh, all the links will be in the description. And if you enjoy watching this video, please give it a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos and without further ado let's jump into Adobe After Effects and get started. Alright so here we are in Adobe After Effects and as you can see this is the footage that you can download with the link in the description and actually uh, the reason why this is an image sequence if we import our video right over here we we click on the first image and make sure we have PNG sequence uh, checked on and then import that and then you want to make sure that you right click and interpret footage, go to main and change this back to 24 frames per second and click OK. So now you have your footage uh, imported, which, uh, which is just like a video, but this will help uh, while tracking this footage. So that's why you're downloading a, an image sequence essentially. So we're going to drag this into a new composition right here. And then one, what you want to do is track down these dots that you see right here on my arm. I painted while well, I actually drew these on my arm uh, in order to have a better track information um, because otherwise we don't have much detail in an arm to really go and track something carefully. So uh, I'll go to the end and I will go click on that uh, video footage, go to animation, track in Mocha AE and here we click OK and now we are in Mocha. So right here I want to go to the end of my timeline so click over here. And then right here, I want to go uh, to this tool right here, uh, the Create X line. And if we click on that, we want to draw a simple mask around our dots, like so. Then once you're done with creating your mask, you just right click on the mouse and that will um, finish this edit. And then right here under the track, we can track backwards. So as we are at the end of the timeline, we want to track it backwards back into time. And once it's done tracking, um, we want to go to the end of our timeline again and this is going to be our image as reference. Also, we're going to edit on this image. So this is going to be our main uh, kind of clean plate, let's say. So if you're at the end of the timeline, we want to go and right click align selected surfaces. And if we do that, uh, if we check on the grid here, you will see that the grid is covering the entire area. Then we want to export tracking data and choose for the format that corner pin only supports RG RUP and so the first option right here and then copy it to clipboard. Now let's go to After Effects again. In After Effects we want to right click, create a new solid layer, make comp size and click OK. Then go all the way till the beginning of the timeline, very important, and we click on that layer and hold Ctrl and press V on the keyboard to paste all the information from Mocha into After Effects. And if we press U on the keyboard, you'll see all these keyframes right here that we just created. So right here at the end, you will notice that this solid is entirely covering our canvas perfectly, and that's exactly what we want. So now what we want to do is click on our solid layer and go to Layer Precompose and leave all the attributes in here and we're going to rename this removal. And now we're going to click on our original footage, also control C to copy our original footage and jump into the composition that we just made for the removal and paste in here our uh, original footage with control V. So now we have our original footage here just as a reference. We're going to put it below the solid and disable the solid for now. And we're going to right click and change this to a guide layer. A guide layer, layer means that you're going to see it in the composition you're in. But once you go to the main composition or where this composition is used, you won't see this guide layer anymore. Uh, you're, you won't see this guide layer anymore. So this is only to see in this composition. So if we go in here, we disable the background. You don't see anything. But if we open it up, you still see it right here. So that's exactly what we want. I'm going to duplicate our guide layer, Control D to duplicate it, right click and uncheck the guide layer because now we do want to see it. And then we want to go to our pen tool right here and just click around our dots uh, like, like this and create a nice mask. We're going to solo this for now and press F on the keyboard and just feather it like this, something like that. 
then double click on the layer and now we're going to individually remove uh, each dot in here. We're going to do that using the clone stem tool right here. So if you click on the clone stem tool, we're at the end of our timeline. Hold alt and click over here and just kind of paint it away. Alt click here, cl uh, delete this a little bit, alt click here, maybe make this a little bit more beautiful. We're actually going to like this, alt click here, remove this, alt click here and just continue doing that until all the dots are gone and they kind of look painted out well. Okay, I think this is okay. Uh, we still have a little bit of detail, but it's okay. And now we want to see in here, and you're going to see each clone that you made. So we have 16 clones. We're going to click on this one, scroll all the way till the bottom, hold shift, click on the last one. That's going to select all of them. And then we want to extend them for the entire timeline. So now uh, that's going to work well. Now go back to that composition. So composition removal right here. And we want to uh, close this down and unsolo it for now. Also very important is to select that footage, right click and go to time, freeze frame so it doesn't move. And now we have this removal, but it's obviously standing still here. But if we go to the main composition, you'll notice that if we select, well, enable our background layer again, it's going to move along with our, bur uh, with our background layer perfectly. So we can see that it's perfectly tracked. We do have a little problem here at the beginning. It's a little bit brighter than, than my arm. So what I'm going to do is go to effect, color correction and apply a curves effect to it. At one second, I kind of noticed that the color and corrections are gone. So we're going to click on the keyframe on the stopwatch for curves. Then go back to the beginning and we're going to darken this up until we're satisfied like this. So now it's going to uh, smoothly transition between, between this effect up until no effect and there we go so the dots are gone we don't notice anything uh, kind of looks good maybe right here we want to brighten it up again okay there we go so once you've removed this uh, we can duplicate our removal layer so we're going to click on the uh, removal layer Control D and go to the project manager and also duplicate the removal layer right here. So click on it, Control D. Now we're going to rename this to track numbers. And we're going to click on the track numbers, click on the removal second uh, duplicate layer right here, hold Alt and drag this on top of it. So it's going to replace it essentially with the same settings. So uh, if we jump into this one now, uh, we can actually delete uh, the removal, we can delete uh, the solid, uh, and we just have the guide layer uh, at the background, but actually we don't need that as well, but yeah, let's keep it for now. Then I'm going to the text tool and click uh, on align the paragraph to the left. Then I'm going to write, then I'm going to write 0, 0, 0, 0, space, 0, 0, 0, space, 0, 0, space, 0, 0, space, 0, 0, space. So um, that's basically how it works in, in time. So it's completely up to you how you're going to use this. Um, but this kind of looks uh, similar to in time. So I'm going to use this, click uh, on the selection tool and just center it out. So we can go over here and toggle the tile action safe to give it a perfect center. Uh, that's like right over here. And then what we want to do is we want to uncheck our background layer for now so we can concentrate on our uh, on our title here. And then what we want to do is click on that layer and go to layer precompose and this is going to be our time. Okay. Open up that composition so we can concentrate on this. We can uncheck the title action safe and uh, we want to duplicate it. Um, but in this case, we want to go to the text tool and remove all the zeros except two and bring these to the right, duplicate them, bring them to the left and duplicate one more time and bring them also to the left. So then I'm going back to the original one. So if we solo this one, we can delete these last zeros. So I just wanted to have like, um, yeah, my timetable, um, but with individual layers for the last three zeros. The reason why is because we want to animate them uh, separately. 
So next I noticed they have like these uh, little dots in between the text. So what I'll do, well, uh, in between the, the numbers, we're going to create a new shape layer, an ellipse tool layer. Make sure no layer is selected in your composition and create a small, small dot like this. Click away, that seems about right. We're going to click on that layer and just move it, uh, holding shift and the arrow keys on the keyboard. We're going to move it into place, like right over here, duplicate it. Run one over here, duplicate it. And one more time. Okay, so the design looks kind of like in a movie, so that's great. Now what I wanna do is uh, go for our numbers. So these are the three layers. This is going to be our hundreds of a second. These are gonna be our seconds. And these are going to be our minutes. I'm going to give everything an individual color just so I can uh, see it a little bit easier. There we go. Uh, for the hundreds of a second, let's start with these. So what I want to do is open up this uh, panel, go to text, and right here we have the source text. Then I wanna go to my effects uh, panel right here, go to the effects and presets and search for slider control. And there we have it. And just bring this on our hundreds layer. So now we have a slider control applied to the layer of our text. Then alt click on the stopwatch for the source text we're going to paste something that I already have copied to my clipboard, uh, but I'm going to also uh, give it to you in the description so you can also use uh, the same expression. I'm going to paste it right here and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can go and see it a little bit better. So and there we go. So this is the base of our expression that we're going to use, a math round. And then in between the uh, parentheses, we want to go with the whip tool, with the pick whip tool, to our slider value. So now we have our slider value right here. So if we're going to move this, uh, you can see that it's going to change. And then right here for this number that is now 31, we want to remove this to 59 because, yeah, of course you have 59 and then the 60th becomes uh, another value of uh, the second in this case. So now it's going to count up until 59 uh, only if we move this so we can see 59 it gets back to zero 59 it gets back to zero so that's something that I wanted to create um, but what I want to do is I want to animate it of course over time so what I'll do is right here at the end of the effect slider control slider we have this um, parenthesis that closes and another one behind that so in between these two I'm going to write plus time which is the time value multiplied by 60 because in this case we want to go 60 times faster than a second so we have the hundreds of a second and that's going to do something like this which is pretty cool so every time it touches 59 it just resets and starts over again so exactly what we want now we're going to copy our expression right here Control c and go into the seconds open up this tab go into the text source text again apply the slider alt click on the source text stopwatch and paste our effect uh, well, our expression right here. And we want to delete, of course, the 60 seconds here. And we want to go for minus time. And that means that every time, every second, it's going to uh, take one number away over time. So that's exactly what we want. We are going to click on our seconds, maybe increase them something like 22 seconds. And now we can see it's counting down just like this. Great. And now one more is the minutes. So the minutes you're not going to notice in this case, but we're just make it to um, well, we'll just make it work. Uh, so yeah, because we have nothing better to do with our days. So alt click on the stopwatch for the source text and paste it over here again, that same expression. And then here we're going to uh, again, minus time. And instead of multiplying it by 60, um, because we want the hundreds, we now want the minutes. So we divide it by 60 to go slower. And now, uh, 
and there is a little mistake because we have zero as a value and we can divide by zero. So what we'll do is apply the slider again to this layer and also increase this number and delete this layer. We don't need that. Okay, so here we have like uh, 34 minutes uh, and 22 seconds uh, to live and then, then, it's, then it stops. So hopefully this tutorial isn't long anymore because otherwise we won't even be able to finish it. But uh, let's continue quickly. Okay, so now we have our animation and this is really cool. If you didn't follow, just pay close attention to the expression. What we want is the effect of the slider right here minus the time and depending on the minutes or seconds or hundreds of a second we want to divide it or leave it alone or multiply it and then just close it with the parentheses and then right here we have this number 59 which means that uh yeah it just stops at 59 in total so um let's close everything here and this should work if you follow along with this tutorial okay so let's go back to our track numbers right here so now we have the numbers but we want to make them um, uh, look as realistic as possible uh, tracked on our arm. So what I'll do is go till the end of my timeline, click on the time numbers and go for toggle the switches and make this a 3D layer until you see this here. Make it a 3D layer and then here I'm going to rotate it with the rotation tool and just rotate it a little bit in depth uh, like this. And that's going to give it a little bit of, uh, yeah, like I said, depth. not too much because that's going to get a little bit too obvious something like this should work fine and then we want to go back to our original footage layer so here we have our numbers uh, and they're working and they're tracking to our arms so that's really cool now we want to of course give it some color so go to effect generate fill we're going to give it a green color just like in a movie or we can go for a nice blue maybe uh, let's see well let's go for the green like in the movie let's not get uh distracted here because we don't have that much time anymore i think it's already too late so yeah something like that okay click okay and now i want to add a solid composite apply it below it and change this to a black color and then in here we want to go to effect Blur and sharpen and apply a Gaussian blur. The Gaussian blur, we're setting this to five. Uh, just to introduce some blur because my footage itself isn't sharp, so the numbers can be sharp or it's not going to look realistic. Then go again to uh, effects, blur and sharpen, and I'm going to apply a vector blur. This really has a cool effect, especially if you keep the value low. So I'm going to enter an amount of two and this is going to sharpen kind of the insides a little bit more. Uh, you can try with three. If you're going to exaggerate, you're going to see that what it kind of does, um, but maybe three works fine. I'm going to stick with two for this uh, for this one. Okay, so we have our numbers. Uh, now we want to toggle the switches and change the blending mode to a screen. And then we want to apply a perfect glow, which is one of our presets, which you can download for free on our website. Apply it to our tracking numbers. Also make sure when you apply a glow uh, in general actually, go to your project manager and check that you are working with 32 bits per channel. You can click on that and here normally uh, After Effects standard is 8 bits, change it to 32, that's going to allow you to work with a little bit more color. So here we have it, uh, the perfect glow standard settings kind of uh, are good for me in my opinion. Maybe change it to 25 to have a little bit more glow or 35 here. And then what I want to do is click on our uh, removal and our regular footage. And I'm going to pre-compose this quickly to footage, well, footage underscore fixed. And duplicate it and put it on top. And then press T on the keyboard and lower the, uh, the opacity to something like 35, uh, something like that. Maybe change it to an additive. See what that does. And then maybe 50, 70, 55. Okay, there we go. So now we have something uh, and the glow kind of gets through our skin, but it's also going to use the, the skin a little bit more uh, to, to let the glow come through and, and make it a little bit more realistic like it's behind our skin. You can make it a little bit more intense if you want, but yeah, that's completely up to you. Uh, we're going to keep it as it is right here. So that's look. Okay, so that looks uh, pretty cool. 
I think we're there. So another thing that I did is I just uh, created a quick solid here uh, like this. I went here to the rectangle tool. I duplicate. Well, I double clicked on it. Then I double clicked here. Clicked at the side and hold control to make it wider. Then subtract my mask. Press M, 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 and then just uh, lower the uh, yeah the expansion to create this kind of wide bar effect. Select my three layers and kind of recompose uh, them. And then I created a new adjustment layer and I applied colors to it. So color. And I applied the effect color correction, lumetry color, went to into, into the creative, and in the uh, well in the basic correction, I went for a minus 0.5 exposure, uh, a contrast of 35, highlights of minus 35, shadow of minus 25, and then I applied a look by going to browse the apocalypse LUT, which is from our LUT pack, which you can download at the website. So these are all the LUTs that come in it. And if we click OK, we can lower the intensity to 50 and create this cool look. So um, I think the highlights were not that much, maybe minus 25 and minus 0 0.03. OK. And there we go. Before, after instantly looks like a real movie and of course the expansion was a little bit too much so I'm going to bring this back okay cool so now what you can do is apply some noise to really make it look like a movie so uh, solid uh, click OK and apply a grain to this so we can go for um, noise and grain maybe just some noise in this case no color something like this Mode, overlay, T on the keyboard. And that gives some noise to our footage. Of course, this is not really the good kind of noise that you're, you're, you're supposed to use. You're supposed to use a film grain, but this is going to make your movie look a little bit more cinematic. So you got some bonus tips in this video. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, but that's basically it. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give this video a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos. And also check out our website. We have a bunch to offer for any kind of digital creatives. And if you buy something from our website, it helps to support this channel. And now, I just hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye.